All right, folks, welcome back. Today, we're doing some more 12 gauge, believe that or not. It's actually been a while since we've been at the bench, but I still have to test all the other stuff we've been loading up. Anyways, today we're gonna to be doing an eight pellet double lot buckshot load with International. I believe we have Winchester primers. And I shot them the other day when I was able to get out there after work. And at 25 yards, I think I had all eight pellets about that size or so, you know, about the size of a pound of powder, maybe this wide, maybe, yeah. Something like that, I don't know. It was pretty impressive for me because I don't really know what to compare it against. Don't have a lot of history shooting shotguns or buckshot or any of that, but again, that was pretty impressive to me to get all eight pellets into, you know, that-ish at about 25 yards. I don't really know, again, what we're aiming for, but I feel like anything I would shoot at within that distance would have been hit. So anyways, I'm gonna load up a few of them with the Ballistic Products Buffer today. Just the original buffer, and we're gonna see if it's any better. I've already got a box loaded up with, uh, here's the five, I guess now twice reloaded, so this will be their third fire, and you can see that they're looking pretty crappy. But there's our load data there. It's roughly one ounce payload, probably moving 1150, maybe 1200. And yeah, here's a look at our homemade hardcast buckshot. Range scrap plus a little bit of linotype. And then uh, thrown in the wet tumbler for a little while. Just to round them out. And I did it in about three different batches. So there's some that are better than others. Some that are worse than others. But I'm not really worried about that. Because again, we're within 25 yards of something. I should reach out to maybe 50 or something. I don't know. We're not allowed to shoot uh, anything at the rifle targets. That's not a rifle round. But I guess we're just going to take our buffer here and fill that up and tap it down. And what this does is cushions the... Uh, the buckshot so they don't get deformed and then when they fly out of your barrel and hit your choke then they get deformed and then they fly down range and you get better accuracy but I guess we come up just underneath our pellets there that looks mighty fine and we've got our eight point crimp got that stuff everywhere whoopsie But, wow, that's beautiful. There's eight pellets with a little bit over 18 grains of international. We're using the CB1114. Uh, Back there you see them. It's meant for a one ounce to one and a quarter ounce payload. And with our eight pellets stacked by twos, that's just under an ounce. Our pellets weigh roughly 53 grains a piece. So, there we go. I guess we'll do, um, we'll mark this one down. Eight buffer. Boom. So yeah, I'll load up a couple more here. Probably don't need five to be able to test this, but I like having ammo, okay? More ammo is better than less ammo. Debate me. You're not going to win that fight, okay? Boom. You can see we don't have any powder. Sorry, you can see we don't have any shot in our load all. It's basically just, uh, you know, a powder dispenser this time. And after we seat our wad, come over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was roughly one scoop of this. This is a 3.4 cc uh, little lead dipper from the Universal Kit. Now it looks like we got a, quite a bit in there, but if you just shake on it, it settles down right on top of our buckshot. There we 
we go. Pre crimp. That's a little crooked. Whoops. This one's going to be swirly. Yeah, not so bad. No bulging of our holes. I don't know how much you guys like bulges, but none here. Nice crimp. Very nice. So, like I said, these load up very easily. As you can obviously see, they load up very easily. If I had new holes, we could be doing a roll crimp. And I do have, we do have the old bingo chips, but these used holes aren't quite, uh, yeah, okay. So I got a new pattern. Forgot what I was doing because we're on the internet. But yeah, I don't have uh, new holes, so roll crimping is more difficult on these once fired. Scooper 3.4 cc's. And just pound it on the table. Line up for the pre cramp. Beautiful. Man, these are working freaking amazingly. It's the perfect um, shot column height. I really, really like these Remington gun clubs. I have some of the nitros and the STSs, but not quite this, you know, as much as I do the gun clubs. So, probably gonna fill up an ammo can or two worth of these and, you know. Keep the gun clubs just for this load. I don't even have a defense shotgun or anything like that, but but uh, well, you know, I do what I want. And it, compared to factory stuff, uh, these aren't a dollar a round, especially since I cast my own buckshot. That's I call it free. My labor and time and materials that went into this have all been paid off by like right now and I earn it back on making the round for less than you know 10 cents you got less than uh, two cents in the wad your primers those are maybe six to seven or eight cents these days so that's maybe 10 cents tops right there my holes are used and yeah my shot is free so don't forget your buffer I guess, I guess if we count the cost of this buffer, which I probably won't, you know, do 500 rounds of or go through an entire bottle with. If we count the cost of the buffer, let's call it, you know, 11 cents for this shot right here. This eight pellet buckshot load compared to from the factory, like the Winchester active duty military eight pellet load. That's like 30 bucks. $35 for 25 of them and I'm doing it for maybe three bucks so what's up haha -ha. one more like actually yeah this this silly little thing of ammo right here almost paid for this almost paid for the press or you know maybe after a box or two will have paid for the press. Losing track of where we're at. We got one more primer to go. Okay. And yeah, this thing's running way smooth since we uh, got her lubricated and it's starting to wear in nicely. And I'm starting to learn how to use it properly. Get a good workflow going on it. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. I really like these pellets too. In this uh, configuration, they just fall in. You can pretty much dump all eight. 
do like a tap or a shake and they're all perfectly right there. Ooh. All right, last one. Got your buffer barely over the top there, okay. Get off the sides. A little bit of a pre-cramp action. Nice, smooth, perfect. And final crimping. Boom. I don't want to say that's the best looking one of the day, but that it's, that's totally serviceable there, folks. And there we are. There's all five of them. Eight pellets, 18.5-ish grains of international. One ounce load, eight pellets once again. Probably going a 1150, 1200, depending on your barrel. And we're gonna compare that against the ones with no buffer, which I said were maybe, what is that, six to eight inches at 25 yards, maybe the size of my hand, bah, maybe like that. So that's pretty good in my eyes for a buckshot load, because I don't really know what to compare it to. Haven't ever shot any of it. Anyways, stay tuned for actually going to the range and testing stuff. I got a whole bunch of shotgun stuff lined up, ready to go. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Well, we made it out here after work to the range here. Real quick, we're testing an eight pellet load with international no buffer versus with buffer. And I've already shot those obviously. Wasn't as good as I remember, but I'm uh, actually liking these a whole lot over here. So let's take these other shots here and I'll show you what we've got. And we are back from the range just like that. Wasn't able to get any footage today, but we got out there after work in between rainstorms and got a little data here. So no chronograph data. We were at 25 yards and this was the eight pellet, no buffer load here with 18 and a half of international. So the white marking here, this was our first shot. We have four of them in about the size of my hand with a few flyers kind of outwardly. But if you uh, put a deer in that size amount of space, that's seven out of the eight. And that could have like hit his kneecap or something, you know, that would have been a bad day. So not too bad at 25 yards. That was the first shot I took with the uh, white there. The second shot, I believe, was the circles. Can't really see them, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One's way down here off screen. So it seems like this one, quite a bit of flyers, same general point of aim here because I have four of them here but then a couple scattered out this way so while it probably would have hit the target that's um, not quite as good as our first shot but this is why I do a few so we can get kind of an average you know what I'm saying so third shot we had the squares one two three four five six seven and then I don't think I saw the eighth one one two three four five six seven yeah, that's where a wad hit and bounced off. And there's no eighth pellet to count. However, shots four and five, that's all of the blue here. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them. You know, in a size just bigger than my hand. So eleven out of sixteen pellets. That's pretty dang good right there. But if we look overall, they're pretty much all within this amount of space here. And uh, a couple flyers, of course. Maybe, I guess, one out of eight. Or if we took five shots, there's maybe, maybe a fraction of them out there. So not bad out at 25 yards. Or maybe this is horrible. I really don't know. I actually don't know anything about shotguns, so I don't know what choke I have in there. I just uh, grabbed the one, and my buddy was like, yeah, use that one. It's good for buckshot. And I can't remember, but it came with three of them. I have that one in there. So this is without buffer. Overall, not totally horrible. Again, most of it is within maybe this 10-inch circle, and then a couple outliers there. But let's take a look at the ones with buffer and see how that compares. So I think the buffer, just looking real quick, overall looks a whole lot better. We'll start with the white ones again. That was the first shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and there's five of them within my hand. The other ones are just right there. So at 25 yards, that's pretty good in my eyes. Shot number two was the other dots here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That one's even tighter. Second group, that's all within my hand. Next shot was with the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't know about those other two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Interesting. Oh, folded it too far. Freaking dummy. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that one opened up a little bit, but still overall we've got one, two, three, four, five of them, roughly bigger than my hand. So then lastly, shots four and five, we step back at 40 yards with the buffer. And here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them here. And this is back at 40 yards. It looks like I just kind of pulled and aimed over here with this one. And then this one is more centered here is what it looks like to me. I was just sitting offhand aiming at this. So I probably pulled that one had we been aiming in the same spot. That's uh, pretty impressive if you were to overlay those two. We've got eight of them within the size of my hand at 40 yards, and then six of them over here, also within the size of my hand. Two flyers maybe, or you count that as one group. That's one group. We might have one flyer out of those two shots. So I will say the buffer seems totally beneficial. However, if I'm within 25 yards, I don't think it's gonna matter a whole lot whether I have a six or an eight inch pattern or even a foot or even two feet because if you put a torso or a deer or something that's not supposed to be there in the way of it, it's gonna get hit. So this is uh, pretty awesome. Now I can do kind of a light recoil or a home defense or a, uh, and then if I want, I can add some buffer and we can actually back out to Maybe I should retry these here at, at distance because I did two shots back to back. I didn't actually walk up to the target and say, okay, that was four and that was five. Maybe I was aiming here and it was like, that's just how it happened. But to me right now, it looks like here's one pattern. Here's another pattern, but we'll go ahead and test it again. Why the hell not? That was pretty fun anyways. I might just load them up like that as is with the buffer just because. And then have some without the buffer because it probably doesn't actually matter in the long run. Anyways, tell me what you guys think. Did I even, you know, try a far enough distance? Do I need to try a different choke? Tell me what choke I should be using. And I'll, I can go look here in a minute, but, you know, we can uh, discuss in the comments what choke I had versus what I need. So on and so forth. We can also probably increase the powder almost two grains if we wanted to play with that. Maybe once we get the chronograph back in action, but who knows, man? Anyways, I'm pretty excited about all that, but uh, we will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.